Over 70% of the Earth's surface is covered in water, so if it covers this much ground, you could just imagine what's lurking beneath it. There's so much we haven't discovered, but also so much we have. Deep sea divers are also finding new things all the time. From a Roman city to a 13,000-year-old human skull, here are 20 strangest things found by deep sea divers. Number 20. A giant shark statue. Seeing sharks in the ocean isn't exactly unusual. There are several different species, with the most terrifying being, of course, the great white. And while you might come face to face with the real deal, there's every reason to believe you may also come face to face with a fake one if you're diving at Lake Neuchâtel in Switzerland. While you're checking out all the different fish species, your heart may leap into your mouth when you come across this massive, evil-looking shark with a mouth full of teeth. This is why the ocean is way deeper than you think. You'd have no idea this is there when you're looking from above. So what on earth is a statue doing in the ocean? Well, the 16.4 foot long shark was actually made for a short movie in 2007 called Shark au Lac by La Jeunesse de la Côte. The majority of the film was made by children, with over 170 involved, along with a few professionals. Once the movie was over, some bright spark decided to drop the statue into the ocean for people to be afraid. After all, a shark in the water, fake or not, is much more terrifying than a shark on land. Before we go on, like this video, smash the subscribe button, and click the notification bell right now, or this centipede will crawl on your face when you're sleeping. Number 19. The Titanic The Titanic is a ship that was undoubtedly made famous by the movie of the same name, and some people can find it hard to draw a connection between a real ship and the fake one. So, deep sea divers are probably quite shocked when they see it in the deep ocean. When it was built, it weighed more than 52,000 tons and measured about 882.5 feet long and 92.5 feet wide at its widest point. And yet, you would never think that such a massive ship is sitting below the ocean surface. The ship's flaws started to be realized once it struck an iceberg, with supposedly watertight compartments being ruptured. When all was said and done, and the sheer lack of lifeboats was realized, over 1,500 people died. Today, deep sea divers can make their way into the Atlantic Ocean and see the Titanic about 400 nautical miles from Newfoundland, Canada, about 13,000 feet underwater. It's split into two main pieces, the stem and bow, and is deteriorating at a rapid pace. In fact, divers who have seen the Titanic on their wish list may want to get down there fast, as it's not expected to be around in just a few decades. Number 18. Military Tanks Pool Bay in the English Channel looks like any ordinary stretch of water. To the non-diving community, it is. But if you put on your diving gear and research some very special coordinates, you may come face to face with military tanks. And not just one either. Seven. Now, I know what you're thinking. Military tanks in the water must mean they were intentionally sunk to prevent the enemy from getting their hands on them. That has happened before, but not in this case. Instead, it was a harebrained scheme that went awry. Hungarian-born and London-based engineer Nicholas Straussler wanted to make a Valentine's tank weighing 17.5 tons float. The idea was that soldiers could float onto a beach in what looked like a boat, only to surprise the enemy by driving onto land in a tank. So he manufactured a rubberized canvas screen which sealed around the tank's main body. When it was raised to its full height of about 8 feet, enough water was displaced to help the tank float. A three-bladed propeller was also added, and the tank would be able to travel at a top speed of four and a half knots in calm water. Except the water wasn't calm. During a simulated exercise, sea conditions deteriorated and the tank started to sink. Some crew got trapped and six men drowned while six tanks were lost. One more went down later. 
Number 17. Trains. We all know that trains belong on tracks, so what on earth are they doing off the coast of Long Branch in New Jersey? Scuba diver Paul Helper was using a magnetometer to map the ocean bottom in 1985 when he found something quite big and metallic. It didn't appear to be a standard wreck site, and he also couldn't notice any debris. When he got to the area, he saw two steam locomotives lying in 90 feet of water. They had been there for over a century before Paul discovered them. After some investigation, it was revealed that they were 222T, which is quite a rare locomotive that wasn't used for transportation due to its small size. Instead, they were used in train yards. But how did they get in the water? Your guess is as good as mine. After extensive research, no records were found about locomotives being lost at sea or even of a vessel carrying them going missing. Most people just believe that when they were being shipped to New York from Boston, they were maybe washed or pushed overboard. The problem is, they just don't appear to have been reported as missing. You can still see these trains for yourself. They are covered in layers of marine plants and barnacles. Number 16. Roman City the ancient Egyptian port city of Heracleion, also known as Thonis, its Egyptian name, dates back to around the 12th century BC and has been mentioned throughout history. It was supposedly visited by Helen of Troy before the Trojan War and was built on adjoining islands intersected by canals in the Nile Delta. At the time, it was the main port for international trade and had wharves, temples, and tower houses linked by pontoons, ferries, and bridges. And then, it was gone. Earthquakes, tsunamis, and rising sea levels weakened the city until, by the end of the 2nd century BC, the island it was built on succumbed to liquefaction. Buildings collapsed into the water, and any remaining part of the city had sunk into the sea by the end of the 8th century. In 1933, an RAF commander was flying over Abu Kir Bay when he saw ruins underwater. Up until this point, most people believed that Thonis and Heracleion were two different cities. French underwater archaeologist Frank Gaudio spent five years looking for the ruins until finally locating them in 1999. Over many years, more and more parts of the city have been discovered, such as an ancient Nile riverboat in 2010, a small Greek temple in 2019, and wicker baskets in 2021 with doom palm tree fruit and grape seeds. Number 15. Sunken Submarine one of the oldest Navy mysteries in Australia was finally solved in 2017 after their first submarine was finally found after being missing without a trace for 103 years. The submarine belonged to the Royal Australian Navy and was carrying 35 crew members from Australia, New Zealand, and Britain. It sank near Rabaul on the island of New Britain on September 14th in 1914 and was discovered off the coast of Papua New Guinea. World War I had only just started and limited resources were available to search for it once it went missing, so it was simply forgotten about by most people. The cause of its sinking isn't yet known, with some thinking it might have struck a reef or got lost in a practice dive. Whatever the cause, people now have closure. A search vessel identified something interesting about 984 feet below the ocean surface before a camera was dropped in to confirm what the item was. The submarine was very well preserved, which may help experts determine what caused it to become lost and other details about the accident. There are hundreds of submarines at the bottom of the ocean, and finding one often happens by chance. Number 14. Pirate Ship when you read children's storybooks with pirates in them, you know they're fiction. Otherwise, you wouldn't read such stories to young children. But pirate ships aren't fiction. At least, not all of them are. The Waida is the only authenticated pirate ship in the world, and it sunk off the coast of Wellfleet in 1717, killing 144 people on board and leaving just two survivors. The bodies of 101 people aboard that boat washed up on beaches, but 43, including the famous pirate captain Samuel Black Sam Bellamy, didn't. Captain Bellamy was one of the wealthiest pirates in history, stealing about $145 million, which is adjusted for inflation, before he died at age 28. A team discovered the wreckage in 1984, and they found signs of human remains inside masses that form around underwater objects. 
In recent years, those remains have been examined in further detail. With the latest cutting-edge technology, they've been able to identify one complete skeleton and portions of another five. The hope is to find out if any of them are Captain Bellamy using the DNA of his descendants. So far, they've only revealed that a femur bone is of Eastern Mediterranean descent. Number 13. Moai Statue If you like exciting diving trips with some amazing sights, then a trip to Easter Island is a must. Off the southwestern shore of this island is where you'll find a sunken Moai statue, and it is truly incredible. Of course, getting to the remote island is challenging with long travel hours, but you'll be pleased you made the trip once you dive 131 feet below the ocean surface. Local inhabitants of the island placed the statue there as a token of gratitude. They wanted to thank the older generations for giving them the skills to live off the sea and as respect for what the water provides. Although some sources state that the statue was a fake Moai made for a 1994 Hollywood movie, it was then sunk offshore. Regardless of which story is true, it's still worth visiting. Going to the dive location is quite simple once you make it to the island. It's a 10 minute boat ride from the coast, and the statue's not nearly as deep as other sunken attractions you often hear about. While you're viewing the statue, you can also be taken in the sights of fish and turtles with clear visibility in all directions. Number 12. Planes. There are potentially hundreds of planes in the vast oceans, most of which we will never see or explore. And this is what makes the wreck of the Corsair plane so popular. It's one scuba divers can visit and frequently do. Many planes and other forms of transport are actually intentionally sunk off the coast of Oahu to form artificial reefs. However, that wasn't the case for the Corsair plane in 1948. The crash wasn't dramatic, but its location means advanced scuba divers can make their way down 115 feet for a look. The plane was on a routine mission in 1948 when it started to sputter. The World War II aircraft's engine was failing, but fortunately, the pilot knew what to do. He put the wheels up and managed to land the plane on the water with its flaps slightly extended. Even after crash landing in the water, the plane wasn't even damaged, and the pilot was rescued nearby in his life jacket. However, the aircraft wasn't buoyant, and it quickly sunk to the bottom of the ocean. Today, you can visit the dive site with a boat and guide about three miles from the Hawaii Kai Marina on the southeast side of Oahu. Wahoo. Number 11. Underwater Jesus There are many famous scuba diving sites around the world, but one that remains popular with many is one you'll find off Key Largo in the Florida Keys. It's the Christ of the Abyss statue, and depicts Christ in a pose like he's offering peace, with his hands and head raised upward to the surface. Of course, the statue didn't get there by accident, and it also wasn't the first statue like it. The first one was called Il Cristo degli Abisi and is located between Camogli and Portofino on the Italian Riviera. This one was created by Guido Galetti and was put near where the first Italian to use scuba gear died in 1947, Dario Gonzati. In 1961, a third casting was made from the original mold and was placed in 25 feet of water off Key Largo, Florida to form what was part of the John Pennekamp Coral Reef State Park. A plaque on this statue is dedicated to the memory of a Miami Pioneer dive shop owner, Michael Kevorkian. It reads, if I take the wings of the morning and swell in the uttermost parts of the sea, even there your hand will lead me and your right hand hold me fast. 1927 in memoriam, 1988, Michael M. Kevorkian. Number 10. Motorcycles. On October 6, 1941, German bombers sank a British munitions ship called SS Thistlegorm. Flames from the bomb licked at the ammunition stores, and before long, the entire ship was torn apart by explosions. 
It sank in less than a minute, giving the Titanic a run for its money. The ship was packed full of cargo, including motorcycles. As the explosion impacted much of the middle of the ship, the way it sank made it quite the paradise for divers to explore. One diver, German photographer Tobias Friedrich, gave the world a look into what was in that ship with a single photograph that earned him the top prize for Underwater Photographer of the Year in 2018. He captured a panoramic photo from the ship in the Red Sea showing Norton 16H motorcycles in the cargo hold with fish schooling above them. According to Tobias, he liked how the bikes lined up, but he found it challenging to capture the photo due to how small the cargo hold was. He wasn't able to fit all the bikes in one frame. However, with a panoramic shot, he captured the perfect photograph, which he called Cycle War. Number 9. A 13,000 year old human skull. Divers uncover lots of interesting things, like treasure, shipwrecks, even trains. But one thing divers never expected to find was a 13,000-year-old human skull, one of the oldest genetically intact human skeletons ever discovered in the Western Hemisphere. In 2007, scientists were exploring beneath jungles of the eastern Yucatan Peninsula in Mexico when they found a skeleton belonging to a teenage girl in a cave. It was found with the remains of saber-toothed tigers, giant ground sloths, cave bears, and an elephant relative, Gomphothir. Because her cranium was intact, the DNA was preserved, and scientists were able to determine that she was petite, about 4 foot 8 inches tall, and around 15 or 16 when she died. Scientists wonder whether she had ventured into the cave to find fresh water and had fallen to her death. The chamber in which she was found was about 131 feet below sea level and looked like a time capsule from the end of the Ice Age. The divers who discovered her called her Naya, and her skull was spotted on a small ledge upside down with a perfect set of teeth. It would have been dry when she fell, but Ice Age glaciers melting approximately 10,000 years ago would have put the caves underwater. Number 8. Cancun Underwater Museum most museums are above ground, but did you notice how we said most, not all? There's one that's actually underground, and it's called the Cancun Underwater Museum. The Underwater Museum was the brainchild of Cancun National Marine Park director Jamie Gonzalez Canto and British sculptor Jason Decare Taylor. They wanted to save coral reefs by giving divers something else to explore instead. And so plans got underway for a type of underwater adventure ground for divers. It consists of 500 sculptures, mostly created by Jason and a few other artists, and three galleries to explore. These are submerged at depths of between 9.8 feet and 19.6 feet within the Cancun National Marine Park. While the diving site is a fun attraction for divers, it serves a much more critical purpose. It's to protect coral reefs. Coral can grow on the sculptures as they're made with pH-neutral cement, giving algae, seaweed, and coral a much better foundation for growth than shipwrecks. As the statues also have holes in them, wildlife can colonize and feed off the coral. So while coral reefs will increase, marine life numbers may as well. Over time, the statues will be barely recognizable by growth. Some damaged reef coral pieces are also placed on the sculptures as a starting point. Number 7. An Underwater River I don't know about you, but I've never heard of underwater rivers. As it turns out, they actually exist. There's one in particular that's captured the attention of scientists. It could rival the Colorado River in its size and ferocity, yet it's not a river you can take photos of, sit beside for a picnic, or go kayaking on. It's known as Monterey Canyon, and it sits about two miles underneath the Pacific Ocean. This strange undersea river has been flowing for millions of years, cutting valleys in the sea floor. You see these valleys for almost 200 miles. Miles. 
Underwater rivers aren't much different from those on land. They have banks on each side, and tributaries can feed into much larger rivers. They can also follow paths or change course. If you drained away the ocean, you would be none the wiser that the river was once under the sea. Surprisingly, underwater rivers weren't known about until around the 1970s when we started doing sonar mapping of the sea floor. We then discovered them extending into the oceans from major rivers like the Amazon. They tend to follow sediment on the sea floor with massive underwater canyons and channels bordered by levees built over time. Number 6. Apollo Moon Rocket Engines While many people say that Amazon founder Jeff Bezos should stick to retail, it's hard to deny he's actually achieved a lot in life. Well, that's what being worth gazillions of dollars can do for people. He led a private expedition to look for the engines that helped launch astronauts to the moon in the 1960s and 70s. According to Jeff, they had some incredible things under the water, including F-1 rocket engines used to launch NASA's Saturn V rocket on the Apollo moon mission. These engines were dropped into the Atlantic Ocean after powering the first stage of the mission. At first, the expedition was private and secret, but the engines were finally located in 2013. Jeff shared details of his mission to recover the F-1 engines with NASA, and they shared his excitement. When Jeff finally revealed that his team had found the engines with deep-sea sonar, no one knew what condition they would be in. Not only did they hit the water at speed, but they had also been sitting in salt water for decades. Using remotely operated vehicles, they found the tangled pile of engine parts 14,000 feet below the surface, and they salvaged enough major parts to rebuild two Saturn V F1 engines out of the 65 ever launched. However, the serial numbers are missing, so it's challenging to work out which missions those engines were actually from. Number 5. The Oldest City in the World Many of the greatest discoveries have happened by pure chance, and that's how the oldest city in the world was found. No one was even looking for it, yet it changed history as we know it. An ancient city was discovered off Gujarat coast, predating the previously known oldest city, Mohenjo-Daro, by about 4,500 years. National Institute of Ocean Technology oceanographers from Chennai were exploring murky waters in the Gulf of Cambay off the Gujarat coast purely measuring marine pollution levels. Part of this process involved taking sonar photographs of the ocean floor. Nothing seemed out of the ordinary when they took the photos, but the murky water may not have made it easy to spot anything anyway. Months later, they analyzed the images and realized they had actually photographed ruins of an ancient city about 131 feet under the sea. In 2002, they spent weeks dredging the area and collecting over 2,000 artifacts. It was during this process that they found out the ruins stretched across about five and a half miles with banks of an ancient riverbed and evidence of a masonry dam. They discovered so many incredible things they weren't even looking for, like rectangular foundations that may have been homes, outlines of drainage systems, mud roads, ornaments, broken pottery, stone stools, ivory, and even human bones. When they sent fossilized wood to be tested, it was estimated to date back to between 5500 BC and 7500 BC. Number 4. Cleopatra's Palace Approximately 1,400 years ago, an earthquake and tsunami hit the coast of the city of Alexandria, causing the island of Antirodos to sink. The island was home to Cleopatra's palace, which is now a diver's paradise under the water. Alexandria was founded by Alexander the Great in 332 BC, with Greek occupation lasting around 300 years until Queen Cleopatra started reigning. She had a beautiful palace that became a symbol of her power, and she was known for stopping Romans from occupying Egypt. When she thought her efforts were failing, she took her own life. A few centuries after her death, the earthquake and tsunami happened, destroying the palace and scattering parts of it in a small bay under about 32 feet of murky water. 
President of the European Institute of Underwater Archaeology, Frank Gaudio, spent a decade planning an expedition to uncover the palace and bring it back to light. Slowly, divers started finding remains of an old dock, giant columns and pillars, Egyptian granite, and even the wooden foundation of the palace. Today, not much remains as many artifacts have been put in museums, but you're free to dive in the area where Cleopatra's palace was found. Number 3. The Yanaguni Monument Plenty of questions still remain about whether the Yanaguni Monument off the coast of the Ryukyu Islands in Japan is human-made or natural, but there is no denying it's an incredible attraction for divers. In 1987, a diver was exploring around the southern Ryukyu Islands when he found what looked like carved steps with straight edges about 82 feet below the water's surface. Today, it's called the Yanaguni Monument, and it's 164 feet by 65 feet. It's easily one of the most unusual underwater sites to explore. It has long been called Japan's Atlantis, with the stone looking like it's stacked in a pyramid-like shape and thought to be at least 10,000 years old. Ask some people and they'll tell you it's a long-lost Pacific civilization built by Joman, prehistoric people who inhabited the islands about 12,000 BC. However, others believe they are simply natural formations with flat surfaces and defined edges, a bit like the Giant's Causeway in Northern Ireland. Ireland. Those interlocking basalt columns were actually formed by a volcanic eruption, even though they look human-made. So we may never know for sure, but the Yanaguni Monument does look intentional. It even has passageways and arched entranceways with 90-degree angles. Number 2. Neapolis Finally, 1,700 years after a tsunami hit the Roman city of Neapolis, it was found underwater, with a network of underwater ruins being discovered by archaeologists in 2017. Thanks to favorable weather conditions, the divers, who had been on the trail since 2010, finally found what they were looking for. They discovered streets, tanks used to produce fermented fish sauce called garum, monuments, and more. Neapolis was a major center, especially for manufacturing garum and salt fish, and it was believed to be the largest center in the Roman world. The ruins that archaeologists found stretched out over nearly 50 acres, with evidence to suggest the city was submerged and destroyed by an earthquake and tsunami in 365 AD. This was when Alexandria and Egypt also experienced horrific damage. We didn't have measuring instruments back then, but historians believe the earthquake most likely consisted of two tremors of about 8.0 on the Richter scale, with enough strength to push up areas of Crete, the Greek island, by about 33 feet. Written records of Neapolis are rare since the city was punished for lack of allegiance to the Romans, so researchers can probably have a lot of their questions answered by what they find in the ruins. Number 1. Caesarea Treasure Archaeologists were probably jumping for joy in 2016 when they discovered treasures on a merchant ship that sank around 1,600 years ago during the late Roman period off the Mediterranean coast. Archaeologists believe the ship was likely laden with metal to be recycled, but may have been struck by a storm when entering the harbor, causing it to drift into rocks and the seawall. That's good news for archaeologists, who dive down into the depths of the ocean to find lumps of thousands of coins, bronze lamps, figurines, bronze cast statues, and much more. The ship's remains were uncovered on the sea bottom, and divers were able to recover iron anchors, fragments of jars that would have been used to drink out of, and much more. According to IAA Marine Archaeology Unit spokespeople, a marine assemblage such as that had not been found in Israel for the past three decades. Decades. Finding metal statues was also rare as they were usually melted down and recycled. This ship hadn't reached its destination, which means those metals destined to be melted down remained in their original state. It's hard to imagine just how deep the ocean truly is, and most of us would be too afraid to find out for sure. But deep sea divers are doing all the heavy lifting for us and finding some truly crazy things. Who knew the ocean could be so deep it hid an entire city? It's just madness. Have you found anything awesome in the ocean? Also, check out our other cool stuff showing up on screen right now. See you next time.